Hello, lovely people. Welcome to my new video. I uh, show at the beginning of this video the situation as I searched the horses um, at one very windy and cold day. It was really uh, freezing cold, and um, there are some days like this where you search and search for the horses and you simply cannot find them. So, this is also the situation I wanted to show you. Um, that there are these days. It was beautiful weather, windy, cloudy, beautiful for photos, but no horses. Hello lovely people, here is another day uh, where I take you to the wild horses. It was a beautiful sunrise and um, just a incredibly uh, atmosphere in the morning. Uh, horses were relaxed, I was uh, meeting this group just on my way. So I have decided to stop and follow them searching for other horses. Um, they moved from another water hole because there was no water anymore and I was happy to find them so I could follow them to find another families, another band. Um, and um, we can see here that uh, horses uh, would come also a little bit closer. Uh, some bands are uh, in the meantime used to the people and are not that shy, so they would uh, come a little bit uh, closer as the others. We have families, they will run away when, you see, when they see you, they will not allow any um, near contact or approach and these horses, like this band here, uh, came uh, very close. So when I'm there I also take a look at hooves of the horses because I have this online coaching and course with uh, hooves and teaching uh, people to uh, make a correct trim on the hooves so the horses can heal, like for example horses with laminitis and such uh, other illnesses. And these horses are young and had very, very good hooves. Uh, these two standing beside me, um, but they are shy at the mo movement, they are shy this is the closest they will come and it appears a little bit closer as it is so they they are not um, that close that I could touch them uh, no uh, so they are out of reach <laughs> And here we have also the first fight at that day. Um, I could film it at the moment I was there. So um, it is a small fight. It is nothing serious. These uh, stallions know each other. So um, that is no fight for um, for a mare or something like that. They are just um, a little bit... Um, uh, looking who is stronger, uh, but it was beautiful to see this uh, strength and this health uh, radiating from these horses, so I made it slow motion. And I followed this uh, group and the next group uh, further, they moved um, direction waterhole, so I followed them 
and here I would like to show you some landscape and this beautiful fog um, in background so it was also beautiful to make photography here with this um, beautiful background it is always uh, great to be in the morning with wild horses especially when the groups are here visiting uh, wild horses when we roam with uh, the horses and then make uh, beautiful photography um, like for example here also this color of this uh, stallion and this uh, background so there are fantastic photos uh, coming out and as you can see um, that band moved uh, lead mayor is leading and the band stallion is following he protects the family from behind this is a moving pattern we will see at the most of the time um, when it is relaxed and when it is normal um, roaming then we see that uh, lead mayor will lead and band stallion protects uh, from behind otherwise as the when it's, it is a danger or band stallion decides family must move now then he will overtake the lead so uh, we came here to this water hall and as you can see horses uh, uh, are stepping here very carefully uh, because it is slippy um, on this um, ground there and uh, here they didn't enter water um, completely uh, because it is slippy and they are careful here usually horses will go into water com as with all four hooves but um, at this water hole they cannot do that also the small falls are taught to go into the water from the beginning but here they are um, careful they see how grown animals um, uh, older animals are behaving and they um, they are careful too now my English uh, videos are a little bit different spoken as my German videos because I uh, speak simply without um, any preparation I just uh, let video run and I speak to it what it comes to my mind in that moment and uh, so you you uh, will have similar s similar information in German videos some things are said there some things other things are said here um, at the moment i watch i comment what comes to my mind um, so some um, thoughts are also uh, different said there and here because i publish from now on um, in two languages same video always in two languages here this small fall came um, to see uh, what I am doing um, and this I explained in German uh, video too that mother is coming now uh, too that um, we ha will have this situation that um, small falls are growing with this situation that 
I am, for example, filming there or some other human they meet because these horses are completely free. These horses are wild horses in few generations already. So um, they are free. There are no fences uh, over there. They can go wherever they want. And um, so will they will meet people. Sometimes you will find them on street. Sometimes, yeah, you will find them simply near village. Uh, so uh, they are growing these foes with this um, contact to the humans, which is not normal uh, for wild animals. They are still wild horses, but it is simply the way of living they have here. And I am thinking on these connections and on this um, uh, situation because uh, um, I am not very fond of it to um, interact with these horses. I would simply want to let them be like they are and to document and explore their behavior. I'm there to document their behavior. But it is simply like that, that this uh, small fold, like them, for example, now will come to me. So, and there are a few horses who come to human and search a little bit near, more near contact. Because if this foal never seen a human, it would never come so close. It is at the beginning, as I was uh, starting to observe these horses, that was some six, seven years ago, uh, they were much more shy, the horses. So now, uh, because there are, of course, uh, people in this place, they are living, uh, walking over mountain and meeting horses sometimes. And we have groups and I organize also these groups for the people, for the horse people and all other people to come and see how these wild horses are living because I would like them to improve the life of their horses at home. Because many horses are... Uh, living in very unnatural circumstances like they are limited in food they are kept on small spaces and you cannot put uh, such an animal in small space and keep it because horses need a place to roam and you also cannot limit uh, animal in food um, I advocate for the horses very much um, intact instincts eating instincts especially because we can see that uh, when horses are given this opportunity they will heal they will heal they they will search uh, for uh, herbs they need they will s they will take only what they need but if their food is not processed this is important so no muslis muslis and no such a uh, pellets and such a uh, food for the horses and then um, they they can heal and many illnesses which appear look at that beautiful scenery here and many uh, illnesses which appear like laminitis and um, uh, equine metabolic disorder and such uh, illnesses which um, which simply come from wrong keeping and wrong feeding are healing if you give to the horses that frame that normal natural frame to live after their intact instincts to move after their normal natural movement movement behavior and to give them of course hurt look at this beauty is that a beautiful stallion I am showing this uh, to you because it was so beautiful. I made also many, many photos. Uh, that was um, why video is not so stable, but I uh, didn't want to cut it. I wanted to show it to you like it was. I just admired that beauty of this stallion. Look at that color and with this blue of the sky and water. But he didn't dare to go on other side to drink because that other uh, stallion didn't allow. <laughs> so he he was a bachelor, so he didn't dare to go there to ban stallion. Uh, but he could drink on other side later. So anyway, look at that beauty. I just love this video and these colors and this situation I was in, I was able to film it like here. It is not an ordinary situation and it is not the, uh, such a 
um, background and such a here beauty where you can film often yeah so um, that was really luck that day um, so anyway uh, to keep horses healthy uh, you uh, or any other animal you have to consider their natural needs and this is what my organization is about this is what my work is about I have published few books um, specialist books on topic on horses uh, I hope I can manage to publish them also in English language. I have many people asking for English uh, translation, but it is really a lot of work on the book and to adjust everything. And uh, um, I have to review, of course, everything and to to see it. And this is uh, um, really a lot of work. And I have a lot of courses going on on and I film um, wild horses. I film and update my horses at the Centrum here in Bosnian and uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, um, where we moved from Hungary. In Hungary, we moved from Germany. So <laughs> always searching for a bigger place for the horses to live because when you start to understand that, when you start to understand the horses, then you search always for some bigger place. There is never enough space for the horses when you start like that. So anyway, we have now here 100 hectares, but I will explain it in another video when I make update of that place. Now uh, this uh, stallion came also to drink from other side, so he could manage it. He's really beauty. There are also now also other families uh, coming. Yeah, and my thought was how to interact with the horses. Um, in order not to disturb them, not to um, distort, distort this um, this um, behavior from them, yes, uh, but to uh, give it like it is, to show it like it is. And these are borders I also have to make for myself. Like, for example, um, I see some horses having um, some... Um, um problems with whose problems i will not say they have not problems yet but they will because i see that the hooves are not developing good and that would be really just a small correction and i could help them to live longer um so this is a really problem because uh, i have few families and few mares which are very um uh, how to say, uh, very uh, connected. I will not say connected, but when they hear my voice, they will come. And um, uh, so uh, I see their hooves and I see, okay, I could help them. And I could do that even because in the way we train, make training with horses, uh, we don't use any ropes, any reins on horses of course no bits and nothing like that no control means on horses we work simply completely free with horses we build relationship and friendship true friendship with free horse on big pasture and then we we exercise with them if if we want such a free uh, auto call lessons and if we don't we just spend time with horses and they uh, behave completely different as if you are in conventional training with them. Um, anyway, I could uh, act with these wild horses to bring them to give me hooves and to allow to me to make hooves. But um, this is the point for me as a researcher and observer that I say um, I cannot do that because then I am... Um, doing something what is not natural and nature always has a reason for something uh, happening 
um, like for example these horses who have bad hooves or other health issues they are going to get ill and then wolves will, will come or other predators they are all living here these horses are really wild um, and then uh, they will be dead and this is the way the nature regulates that. This is what you will see in wilderness all, always. So um, this is in wild, uh, like how how it happens. And um, yeah, this is the way it goes. So I um, said to myself or decided for myself that I will not interact. I'm there to observe to document and to show that natural behavior as far as it is possible because observing on its own is interaction but okay that is the way how it is if we want to make such a videos and such a footage and to show it to the world then we have to film it So here I have spoken about it, um, how it was uh, great to see uh, these old horses gathering there and to become part of um, this um, herd. It is like um, always the case when you spend a lot of time here with horses uh, that you simply dive in into that herd um, connection and that herd um, how to say um, I I don't find real world for that it is simply that you feel the horses you feel them another way and you feel how they think and how they communicate because they do that and you uh, get more and more feeling for that and um, yeah this is um, also uh, spending time with horses uh, makes much more clear what horses really need um, so a human will try then to change and improve circumstances um, for own horses too like I did too and many many people in our community done that um, and um, there are some people saying um, well we don't have uh, so many hectares freeland here or it is too expensive or I will never reach it and yeah um, if you think like that then you will not reach it but um, I would like to encourage everyone watching that there is a way for everything and um, if you think in that patterns that everything is possible and there is a way for everyone and for every situation then you will find that solution then the door will open for you to reach that um, so this is uh, there is always a way for for every problem or for every wish how it can come through and I have seen so many people in our community realizing that dream they have had a dream for big space for their horses I also had that dream and I realized that uh, from uh, uh, a box where I where my horses li horse lived at in one box small box then to an uh, open barn um, where horses had maybe one hectare um, and then to my own place with uh, uh, 10 hectares approximately but horses had all the time open and now my horses live at 100 hectare so <laughs> you see um, there is always a way um, and you can always step further and further if you wish that and if you believe
So now, uh, at the end of the video, I will um, tell you a story <laughs> what happened. Uh, you can see uh, this uh, tree here, and it was the only tree here. There are there are no trees here. It was the only one, and this tree was very important for me because there uh, came um, six kangals. I hope I can speak it right way kangals these are uh, big dogs who protect sheep so shepherd so, uh, to say uh, uh, dogs and they they uh, came attacking me so <laughs> so this is the situation that can happen here uh, we have these uh, cases uh, because there are many sheep herd here and um, there are dogs protecting these herds and I uh, was um, Moving with the horses now from that um, place where I was on waterfall, uh, water hole, you could not see anything when you were down there. And now I got up there at the time, at the right time, I have to say. So I followed this herd further to um, film uh, their movement when they got away from the water hole. And, um, uh, so I was at the right moment there to see that these dogs are coming. <laughs> and um, this was a dangerous situation. Um, I didn't have any uh, tool to protect me or defend me. Um, so I just had camcorder and camera. I, di I didn't took anything with me that was very... Um, stupid from me that I didn't think on it uh, and as this family came to me I just wanted to make beautiful photos of this stallion um, and then I have seen um, <laughs> these dogs appearing there and I just moved towards that tree they didn't see me moving because they were um, looking at the horses. There were many horses there still. So they were uh, simply um, focusing on these horses. They didn't uh, look at me. I, I was hoping they will go away so I can move away from there. But um, I thought that will not happen because when dogs are here, then sheep are coming for water. So I was thinking, what can I do now? Because um, this is a really dangerous situation. So, and um, um, luckily there were a few stones, just few stones near that tree. Uh, so I collected them and put it uh, beside tree so I can um, hit the dogs if they come and attack me. Um, the other option was to um, climb up to the tree uh, but this was um, a problem because I had my dog with me and they will kill my dog. So I, I was keeping these all options open, what to do, and uh, hoping some uh, for a bit uh, that they will go away. But these are four of them here. One is Mix and uh, the others are Kangals and the other two more will come too. And... Um, uh, so I was uh, very uh, in difficulties here. <laughs> I'm not fearful because I had myself two Kangals. I know this um, breed very good. Um, so and with one that would be not a problem. But if there is a pack of these dogs, they are all um, about 60 kilo each and I am maybe 50 kilo. So they are huge and I know the breed uh, as I had them myself and I know what they are capable of. So they are very dangerous dogs. Uh, and this is why I yeah, <laughs> um, was in that moment um in difficulties and as he turned around this is the moment he saw me and then they came <laughs> i will show you here a small video showing uh, how the kangals attacked uh, one of my group when we was in out we were in auto so you can see these dogs 
anyway um they came attacking and i climbed up of the tree first then i came down to protect my dog and um then the shepherd came that owner of them and he saved me <laughs> so this is a story in short how that happened and um from now on i always carrying something with me to protect me um myself uh if they come uh, but this was really very dangerous situation and here are a few more uh, footage uh, and photos f for you how they attack and how big they are we were in auto and we were scared and we had uh, fear they they will jump on auto so on the car so um this is uh, for this moment, for this video. I wish you all the best with your horses and your dreams. I hope you like this video and um, see you in the next video. Bye bye.